Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. We have a big merchandise sale going on now through the month of April. Go to playingwithpowermtg.com and get up to 50% all of our merchandise. We also have a podcast. Check us out on YouTube or your favorite podcast aggregator. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Sean, pounding Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. This is a mono white stacks deck that seeks to maximize its commander's ETB doubling ability to break parity and achieve victory. Sean's opening hand contains an Esper Sentinel, Ranger Captain of Eos, Redane God of the Worthy, Chrome Mox, Plains, Prismatic Vista, and an Ice Wind Stalwart. Next, we have Ryan, piloting the partner pair of Jessica Thrice Reborn and Timna the Weaver. This deck, affectionately known as Dommy Mommies, is a mad farm list that can either go for an early ad nauseum or grind advantage with its commanders. Ryan's opening hand contains a Stone Coil Serpent, Verdant Catacombs, Bloodstained Mire, Mana Crypt, Simeon Spirit Guide, and his Lena Mulligans are an Orm's Chant and a Reign of Filth. Next, we have Drake, Pounding Bergy, God of Storytelling. This is a mono red deck that seeks to utilize its commander and various ritual effects to storm off and win the game. Drake's opening hand contains two snow covered mountains, Mana Vault, Urza Saga, Jeweled Lotus, Mind Goblin, and his Lena Mulligan is a finale of promise. His sticker sheets are Train Blessed Mind, Ancestral Hot Dog Minotaur, and Eldrazi Guacamole Tightrope. Can't believe I'm saying that in a CDH game, but here we are. Finally, we have Anthony, piloting Tyam, Luminous Enigma. This is an Abzan stacks deck that seeks to control the board with various stacks pieces before ending the game with one of several combos. Anthony's opening hand contains a Bloodstained Mire, Dreneth Magistrate, Opposition Agent, Soul Ring, Command Tower, Knight of the Reliquary, and his Lena Mulligan is a Blind Obedience. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of when we publish more content. Also, be sure to check us out on social media. We are available wherever you decide to sow your discourse. Without further ado, let's kick off this hellacious horror show of Highlander hooligans. Sean had the sickest freestyle CDH rap verse and gets to start us off. Sean draws a card for turn and plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a planes onto the battlefield. He casts an Esper Sentinel. Sean passes. Ryan draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Stone Coil Serpent where X equals 1. He casts a Mana Crypt. Esper Sentinel triggers and Sean draws. Ryan exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts his commander, Jessica, Thrice Reborn. It enters with one loyalty counter. He activates Jessica's first ability, targeting Stone Coil Serpent. All through, Ryan ships his turn. Drake draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Drake pays. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Bergy, God of Storytelling. Drake ends his turn. Anthony draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. Sentinel triggers, and Sean draws. Anthony passes to Sean. Sean draws and plays a Plains. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Redane, God of the Worthy. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos. Ranger Captain enters, and Sean fetches up a Walking Ballista into his hand. Sean ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Vernant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts his other commander, Timna the Weaver. He activates Jessica's second ability where X equals 1, targeting Esper Sentinel, Anthony, and Sean. It resolves, Sentinel dies, and Anthony and Sean each take one. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Anthony with Stone Coil Serpent. Anthony takes it, and in his second main phase, Ryan pays one and draws one through Timna. Finished up, Ryan passes. Drake draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a snow-covered mountain for turn. He casts a Felwar Stone. Bergy triggers, and Drake adds a red. He uses that mana to help cast a Mana Vault. All through, Drake ships the turn. Anthony draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Knight of the Reliquary. He ends his turn. Sean draws and plays a Plaza of Heroes. He casts Recommission, targeting Esper Sentinel. It resolves, and Sentinel returns to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. Sean passes. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He recasts his commander, Jessica, Thrice Reborn. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Sean draws. Jessica resolves and enters with three loyalty. Ryan activates Jessica's second ability, where X equals three, targeting Esper Sentinel, Ranger Captain of Eos, and Bergy. In response, Sean sacrifices Ranger Captain, locking out his opponents from casting non-creature spells this turn. Still in response, Sean casts Ephemerate, targeting Sentinel. It resolves, Sentinel flickers, and Ephemerate is exiled. Then Jessica's ability resolves, and Bergy dies. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Drake with Stone Coil and Sean with Timna. They both take it, and in his second main phase, Ryan pays two and draws two through Timna. Ryan ends his turn. Drake draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. He floats mana and sacrifices it, fetching up a Sensei's Divining Top onto the battlefield. He taps his mana vault to help cast Mind Goblin. It enters, and Drake puts a Guacamole sticker onto Mind Goblin, adding four red. He casts Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Sean draws. Drake activates Top, drawing a card and putting Top on top. He activates Harnfell, discarding a card, and exiles Sensei's Divining Top and Grinning Ignis from the top of his library. 
He plays a snow-covered mountain as his land for turn. He casts Sensei's Divining Top from Exile. Finished up, Drake ships the turn to Anthony. Anthony draws and plays a command tower. He casts Draneth Magistrate. He passes. During Sean's upkeep, Ephemerate's rebound triggers, but he can't cast it due to Draneth Magistrate. He draws and casts a Soulless Jailer. In response, Anthony activates Knight of the Reliquary, sacrificing Bayou and fetching up a Gaius Cradle onto the battlefield. Then Jailer enters. Sean ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Plateau. He casts an Overloaded Dam. Esper Sentinel triggers and Ryan pays. It resolves, wiping the board. Ryan casts a Lotus Petal and ships the turn to Drake. During his draw step, Drake takes the damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he activates Harnfell, discarding Twin Flame and exiling Snow Covered Mountain and Seething Song. He casts Seething Song from Exile, adding 5 red. He casts Wheel of Fortune. Holding priority, he casts Fork, targeting Wheel. In response, Anthony flashes in an Opposition Agent. Then the Wheel copy resolves, everybody discards their hand and draws 7 cards. With the original Wheel still in the stack, Drake activates Harnfell, discarding Experimental Frenzy and exiling Treasonous Ogre and Ancient Tomb off of the top of his library. He activates Harnfell again, discarding Mox Opal and exiling Chaos Warp and Overmaster. He activates Harnfell, discarding Mizix's Mastery and exiling Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon. <laughs> he activates Harnfell, discarding Big Score and exiling Lightning Bolt and Snow Covered Mountain. He activates Harnfell, discarding Act on Impulse and exiling Mox Amber and Conqueror's Flail. He activates Harnfell again, discarding Runaway Steamkin and exiling Tybalt's Trickery and Defense Grid. He activates Harnfell one more time, discarding Chrome Mox and exiling Snow Covered Mountain and Commune with Lava. With Wheel still in the stack, Ryan casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Opposition Agent. It resolves, and Agent dies. Still with Wheel on the stack, Sean casts Enlightened Tutor. It resolves, and he fetches up a Mana Crypt onto the top of his library. Finally, the original Wheel resolves, everybody discards their hands, and draws 7. Armed with a fresh 7, Drake activates Harnfell, discarding Pyroblast and exiling City of Traitors and Past in Flames. He activates Harnfell, discarding Snow Covered Mountain and exiling Lotus Petal and Ricochet Trap. He activates Harnfell, discarding Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, and exiling Snow Covered Mountain and Aetherflux Reservoir. He casts Lotus Petal. He plays a City of Traitors as his land for turn. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Grim Monolith. He cracks his Lotus Petal, adding a red. He casts Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts Treasonous Ogre. Drake activates Ogre four times, paying 12 life and adding four red. He casts Aether Flux Reservoir. He casts Mox Amber. Reservoir triggers and Drake gains 13. He casts Overmaster. Reservoir triggers, Drake gains 14 and draws a card through Overmaster. He casts a Mana Crypt. Reservoir triggers and Drake gains 15. He activates Ogre twice, paying six life and adding two red. He casts Past in Flames. Reservoir triggers and Drake gains 16 life. He activates Ogre twice, paying six life and adding two red. He casts a Defense Grid. Reservoir triggers and Drake gains 17. He activates Ogre, paying 3 life and adding a red. He flashes back Rite of Flame. Reservoir triggers, Drake gains 18 and adds 2 red. He flashes back Seething Song. Reservoir triggers, Drake gains 19 and adds 5 red. He flashes back Overmaster. Reservoir triggers, Drake gains 20 and he draws a card. He flashes back Act on Impulse. Reservoir triggers, Drake gains 21 and he exiles Hazaret's Undying Fury, Arcane Signet, and Imperial Recruiter from the top of his library. He activates Ogre, paying 3 life and adding a red. He casts Arcane Signet from Exile. Reservoir triggers and Drake gains 22. Now, with plenty of life, Drake arms his Reservoir, takes aim, blasts his opponents to Kingdom Come one at a time, and Drake wins the game. Well, that was a pretty explosive turn even by our standards. The table decided that they couldn't live with getting shot by a large cannon and decided to go again. In this game, Ryan brings back Timna and Jessica, and his opening hand contains a Verdant Catacombs, Spectator Seating, Archivist of Ogma, and his four London Mulligans are Grand Abolisher, Grim Monolith, Wishclaw Talisman, and Ad Nauseam. Drake brings back Bergy. His opening hand contains an Unexpected Windfall, Rite of Flame, Mana Crypt, Snow Covered Mountain, Treasonous Ogre, and his London Mulligans are Red Elemental Blast and a Finale of Promise. His sticker sheets are Unglued Pea Brain Dinosaur, Phyrexian Midway Bamboozle, and Unassuming Gelatinous Serpent. Anthony brings back Tyam, and his opening hand contains a Vampiric Tutor, Worldly Tutor, Elves of Deep Shadow, Vault of Champions, Survival of the Fittest, Verdant Catacombs, and a Benevolent Bodyguard. Sean brings back Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. His opening hand contains a Seasoned Dungeoneer, Spirited Companion, Esper Sentinel, Emeria Shattered Skyclave, Two Planes, and his London Mulligan is a Portable Hole. And Ryan gets to start us off. Ryan draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs as his land for turn. He passes. Drake draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts his commander, Bergy, God of Storytelling. Drake ends his turn. Anthony draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He ships his turn. Sean draws and plays a Plains. He casts Esper Sentinel. He passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Ryan cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield tapped. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Spectator Seating. He passes. 
During his upkeep, Drake loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts Rite of Flame. Bergy and Esper set no trigger. Sean draws through Esper and then Drake adds a red through Bergy. Then Drake adds 2 more red. He casts Treasonous Ogre. Bergy triggers and Drake adds a red. Treasonous Ogre resolves and Drake activates Ogre 5 times, paying 15 life and adding 5 red. He casts Hazaret's Undying Fury. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then Hazaret's Undying Fury resolves. Drake shuffles his library and then exiles City of Traders, Soul Ring, Snow Covered Mountain, and Experimental Frenzy off of the top of his library. He casts Experimental Frenzy and Soul Ring for free from exile. Drake adds two red through Bergy, then Soul Ring resolves. With Experimental Frenzy still on the stack, Drake casts Unexpected Windfall, discarding a card. Drake adds a red through Bergy, then draws two and creates two treasures. Then Experimental Frenzy resolves. Drake casts Shattered Skull Smashing where X equals zero off of the top of his library through Experimental Frenzy. Bergy triggers and Drake adds a red. He activates Treasonous Ogre six times, paying 18 life and adding six red. He cracks both of his treasures to help cast Commune with Lava off of the top of his library where X equals seven. Bergy triggers and he adds a red. Then Commune with Lava resolves and Drake exiles Act on Impulse, Helm of Awakening, Snow Covered Mountain, Gamble, another Snow Covered Mountain, Big Score, and Mox Amber. He casts Mox Amber from Exile. Bergy triggers and adds a red. He casts Helm of Awakening from Exile and he adds a red through Bergy. He casts Overmaster off of the top of his library. Bergy triggers and adds a red. Then Overmaster resolves and Drake draws. He casts Grape Shot off of the top of his library targeting Esper Sentinel. Grape Shot Storm and Bergy trigger. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then all 11 copies of his Grape Shot target Ryan. Ryan then takes 11 damage and Esper Sentinel dies. Next, Drake casts Gamble from Exile. Bergy triggers and Drake adds a red. In response, Ryan flashes in an Archivist of Agma. It resolves and Drake fetches up a card into his hand then randomly discards a snow-covered mountain. Archivist of Agma triggers and Ryan draws a card and gains a life. Drake casts Act on Impulse from Exile. Bergy triggers and adds a red. Act resolves and Drake exiles Blood Moon, Barbarian Ring, and Dual Caster Mage off of the top of his library. He plays a snow-covered mountain off of the top of his library as his land for turn. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Big Score from Exile, discarding Recoup as an additional cost. Bergy triggers and Drake adds a red. Then, holding priority, Drake activates Treasonous Ogre, paying 3 life and adding a red, dropping down to 1 life. With Big Score still in the stack, Drake casts Dual Caster Mage from Exile. Bergy triggers and Drake adds a red. It enters and he creates a copy of Big Score. Then both the copy and the original Big Score resolve, then Drake draws 4 cards and creates 4 treasures. He cracks 2 treasures, adding 2 red. He casts Aether Flux Reservoir off of the top of his library, to the disbelief of the table. Bergy adds a red and then Drake cracks another treasure to help cast Blood Moon from Exile. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 19 life through Aether Flux. Then Blood Moon resolves. Next, Drake cracks a treasure to add a red and then cast Chaos Warp off of the top of his library, targeting his Mox Amber. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 20 life through Aether Flux. Then Warp resolves, Mox Amber is shuffled into his library, and then Drake reveals a professional facebreaker, putting it onto the battlefield. Drake activates Treasonous Ogre four times, paying 12 life and adding four red. He activates Experimental Frenzy, destroying it. He casts a Felwar Stone. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 21 life through Aether Flux. He casts an Arcane Signet. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 22 life through Aether Flux. He casts Pirate's Pillage, discarding bonus round as an additional cost. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 23 life through Aether Flux. Pillage resolves, Drake draws two and creates two treasures. He sacrifices a treasure to activate Facebreaker's ability, exiling a Mana Vault. He casts Mana Vault from Exile. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 24 life through Aether Flux. Drake sacrifices a treasure to activate Facebreaker's ability, exiling Pyrokinesis. He casts Memory Jar. Drake adds a red through Bergy and then gains 25 life through Aether Flux. He casts Twin Flame, targeting Facebreaker. Drake adds a red through Bergy, then gains 26 life through Aether Flux. Drake now has enough life to give everybody Game 1 flashbacks, blasts the other players one by one with Reservoir, and Drake wins the game. Well, that was quite a game. The crew decided to shuffle up one more time, with everyone other than Drake hoping to not get shotgunned by a Kaladeshian water tank in this game. Drake brings back Bergy, and his opening hand contains the snow-covered mountain, City of Traitors, and his five London Mulligans are Act on Impulse, Hazaret's Undying Fury, Snow-Covered Mountain, Wooded Foothills, and a Crystal Vein. His sticker sheets are Playable, Delusionary Hydra, Phyrexian Midway Bamboozle, and Train Blessed Mind. Anthony brings back Tyam, and his opening hand contains an Other Sworn Canonist, Opposition Agent, Finehorn Elves, Arid Mesa, Bayou, Ranger Captain of Eos, and his London Mulligan is a Lion's Eye Diamond. Sean brings back Elish Norn, and his opening hand contains a Spirited Companion, Walking Ballista, Draneth Magistrate, Myrel, Shield of Argive, Chrome Mox, Unexpectedly Absent, and an Aired Mesa. Ryan brings back Jessica and Timna, and his opening hand contains an Esper Sentinel, Dam, Godless Shrine, Wishclaw Talisman, Phyrexian Tower, Badlands, and a Cabal Ritual. And Drake gets to start us off. Drake draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. To the relief of the table, he does nothing else and passes. 
Anthony draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts Finehorn Elves. He ends his turn. Sean draws and also plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Plains onto the battlefield. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting unexpectedly absent. He casts a turn one, Dreadeth Magistrate. A different set of groans flood the table, and Sean ships the turn over to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Godless Shrine into play untapped, paying two life. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He passes. Drake draws and plays a City of Traitors. He glares at the Draneth and ends his turn. Anthony draws and plays a Bayou. He also has no further actions and passes to Sean. Sean draws and casts Spirited Companion. It enters and Sean draws. He plays a Homeward Path as his land for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Draneth. Ryan takes it and Sean ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Badlands. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He casts a Mana Ball. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with Sentinel. Drake takes it and Ryan passes to Drake. Drake draws and casts Faithless Looting. Esper Sentinel triggers and Ryan draws. Drake then draws two and discards two. Drake passes. At the end of Drake's turn, Anthony flashes in an Opposition Agent. Anthony draws and plays a Tyvar, Jubilant Brawler. Sentinel triggers and Ryan draws. Anthony activates Tyvar's first ability, untapping Finehorn Elves. Anthony passes. Sean draws and plays a Plains. He casts Myrel, Shield of Argive. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with Spirited Companion. Drake takes it and Sean ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with Ragaman and Sentinel. Drake takes it, Ragaman triggers, Ryan creates a treasure, and Drake exiles reverberate from the top of his library. In his second main phase, Ryan casts a Talisman of Hierarchy. Finished up, Ryan passes to Drake. Drake draws, takes no actions, and passes. Anthony draws and plays a Command Tower. He activates Tyvar's second ability. He mills three, but fails to return anything to the battlefield. He casts a Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters, and Anthony fetches up a Sylvan Safekeeper into his hand. He casts Sylvan Safekeeper. In response, Ryan cracks a treasure to help cast Vanishing Burst, targeting Opposition Agent. It resolves, and Agent is exiled. Then Safekeeper resolves. All through, Anthony ends his turn. Sean draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts his commander, Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. He moves to combat, attacking Ryan with Spirited Companion, Andranath, and Tyvar with Myrel. Myrel triggers, and Sean creates a 1-1 Soldier. Both declare no blocks, and Tyvar dies. Sean ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He cracks his Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Plateau onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Drake with Ragavan. Drake takes it, Ragavan triggers, Ryan creates a treasure, and Drake exiles Defense Grid from the top of his library. Ryan ends his turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Drake casts a Braid, targeting Dranith and paying for Esper. It resolves, and Dranith dies. The turn moves to Drake. Drake draws and casts his commander, Bergy, God of Storytelling. He casts a Mox Amber. Bergy and Esper trigger, Ryan draws through Esper, and Drake adds a red through Bergy. Drake passes to Anthony. Anthony draws and plays a Guy's Cradle. He casts his commander, Tyam, Luminous Enigma. He ends his turn. Sean draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He casts Journey to Nowhere. Sentinel triggers, and Sean pays. Journey enters, triggering twice due to Elish Norn. Sean targets Bergy and Spirited Companion with his Journey triggers. They're both exiles, and Drake puts Bergy into the command zone. Sean moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Myrel and Elish Norn, and Drake with the Soldier. Myrel triggers, and Sean creates two 1 1 Soldiers. They both take it, and Sean ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Scrubland. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Anthony. Ryan casts Dam, targeting Elish Norn. It resolves, and Elish Norn is destroyed. Next, Ryan casts Twin Flame, targeting Esper Sentinel. Holding priority, he flashes in a Dualcaster Mage. Dualcaster enters, and Ryan targets Twin Flame. In response, Sean casts March of Otherworldly Light, exiling Rule of Law from his hand as an additional cost, targeting Dualcaster. Sentinel triggers, and Ryan draws. March resolves, and Dualcaster is exiled. Dualcaster's ETB resolves, and Ryan creates a copy of Twin Flame, creating a copy of Esper Sentinel. Then the original Twin Flame resolves, creating another copy of Esper Sentinel. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Drake with Ragavan and Sean with the two copies of Esper Sentinel. They both take it, Ragavan triggers, Ryan creates a treasure, and Drake exiles a snow-covered mountain. In his second main phase, Ryan casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. He moves to his end step and sacrifices his copies of Esper Sentinel. The turn moves to Drake. Drake draws and exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Pirate's Pillage, discarding a card as an additional cost. Esper Sentinel triggers and Ryan draws. Pillage resolves, Drake draws two and creates two treasures. All through, Drake ends his turn. Anthony draws and activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Drake. He taps his guy's cradle, adding four green. He sacrifices Ranger Captain of Eos, locking out his opponents from casting non-creature spells this turn. He casts Ashnod's Altar. Esper triggers and Ryan draws. Anthony casts Promise of Boon Ray. He sacrifices his Vindorn Elves to Altar, adding two colorless. Promise of Boon Ray triggers, and he creates four 1-1 Spirit Tokens with Vigilance counters on it through Tyam. He activates Tyam, paying three mana and removing three counters from among his permanents. He then mills three and then returns Promise of Boon Ray to the battlefield. 
Anthony presents a loop of sacrificing a creature to altar, sacrificing Promise of Boon Ray to create four spirit tokens with counters on them, then activating time and returning Promise to the battlefield. Anthony creates an infinite amount of 1-1 spirit tokens with Vigilance counters, mills his library into his graveyard, and then makes infinite colorless mana. He then uses his infinite mana to return Moon Glove Extract to the battlefield through time as many times as he needs to kill his opponents. He throws the Elvish Poison at his opponents many, many, many times until they are all dead, and Anthony wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great set of games tonight. Congrats to Drake and Anthony on their wins. In games one and two, Drake's two wins showed how Bergy can combo off facing either side, especially when aided by a free source of mana. In game three, Anthony waited patiently as others built their boards up. He then used his opening to lock down his opponents and win with a pretty unique infinite loop. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Treasonous Ogre. A source of mana that requires nothing more than paying life is an invaluable resource, especially in CEDH. This ogre was the key component to how Drake was able to pull off his combo lines to win in one long turn in two separate games tonight. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.